Hi guys, so I'm super excited but I'm very anxious at the same time because I'm about to apply for my ILR. So I want you guys to apply with me. <laughs> So for those who are confused, ILR means indefinite leave to remain. It's AKA permanent residency. You no longer require any visa to enter or leave the UK. You're going and coming and you're staying in the UK is not tied to any employer. Once you get the ILR, you can decide to quit the job that brought you to the UK and do whatever you like without it affecting your visa. So that's how cool it is. And once you have permanent residency, you can enjoy all the benefits legally. It's a huge deal that most migrants look forward to. So for me, I came to the UK about five years ago on the skilled worker visa or tier 2 visa so depending on the kind of visa that she came on you are either on the five-year route to permanent residency the three-year route or the two-year route or even the 10-year route you must have lived and worked in the uk for five years to be eligible to apply for the indefinite leave she may. if you have a tier one visa it can be two or three years if you have an innovator founder visa or a global talent visa it can be three years but as a skilled worker as a nurse or on a health and care worker visa it's five years so even though i have lived five years there are some requirements as well these are the requirement i should meet the salary requirement okay so there should be an amount of money that i'm earning at least to qualify me to get the ilr and also i should still be needed for the job that i'm doing they should still say that they need me so for tier 2 visa holders because we proved our english proficiency when we're applying for our visas by submitting an ielts result some people also submitted naric or the ectus because you proved it earlier you will not be allowed to redo an english exam okay but for those who did not prove you might need to rewrite an, an english exam and for the life in the uk Obviously, I told you guys that I have passed. I have a video where I showed you guys the tips that and secrets that I used to pass. So those are the three things. I lived and worked five years in the UK. I should meet the salary requirement, knowledge of language and life in the UK test, and my job should still need me. Another thing as well is time that counts towards your time in the UK. So this thing is very tricky. So if in the five-year period, if you lived more than 180 days outside the UK, um, you do not qualify. You'd have to phone them and then they'll help you count the number of days that qualify. And there are lots of people in this category, especially those who traveled to their home countries just before COVID and they could not come back because the airports were closed. For such people, you'd have to phone the home office and, they, and maybe they'll give you some guidelines because I don't know what's going to happen. Or maybe they'll let you live extra six months in the UK to make the full five years. So I hope I'm making sense. So basically that's that. So today's video, I'm just basically going to apply for my ILR. There's a calculator to check if you are actually due to apply for your ILR. So, so I'm just going to go to ILR calculator. Okay. And then click on it. Okay so these are the questions okay so they said that what is the length of the continuous period of residence required for the ILR route you are applying for so for me it's the five years so that's what i'll choose what was the start date of your first relevant visa that goes toward the continuous period for the ILR so the start date of the visa was let me check the the start date of the visa so that will be 5th november 2018 so the five years eh, you can apply as early as 28 days before the five years is due okay so 28 days before you hit the five year mark that's the earliest you can apply why this is very important is because if you apply too early they'll say you do not meet the requirements and then you would have wasted your money but they would not refund the money to you okay so you have to be very careful when you apply later that's okay but don't apply after your current visa expires make sure you're applying before the current visa expires but make sure you're not applying way too early so the confusion is some people don't know whether the five year mark is the date on the visa on the date you entered the uk or the date you apply for the visa recently one of my friends who i came around the same time with he's already gotten his ilr but what he used is the date of his visa application 28 days prior to that date hitting five years that's when he applied and they gave it to him they did not say he had applied too early but for some of us we want to be very very safe okay so i chose to apply using the date on my visa and the next question is for the above visa what was the earliest day that you were physically in the uk for instance as indicated by the stamp on your passport so the day that i was physically in the uk would be around the first picture i took at the airport was on november um, 19th 2018 so that was the day that i physically entered the uk so that's the days that i'm going to put there november 2018 19th november 2018 19 november 28th okay and what is the expiry date of your current visa the expiry date of my current visa i think is the expiry date on the brp so that is december 2024 okay so that is 4th december 2024 it's 4th December 2024. So now it's going to calculate, okay? So you, you have entered the UK 14 days after the start date of your visa. 
As this is still within the 180 day allowance, it will be counted as allowable absence and your qualifying period starts date is 5th November 2018, which was when your visa was granted, okay? Okay. The end date of your qualifying period for ILR is 4th November 2023. Your earliest ILR application date is 7th October 2023. Do not submit an application before this date as otherwise your application will be rejected and no refund will be given. If you spent or have spent more than 180 full days in any 12 month period between 5th November 2018 and 7th October 2023, then your ILR clock will reset and your earliest ILR application dates will change. Okay. So guys, this is it. I input the date of the first visa that I was given from Ghana, which was 5th November 2018. And then the days that I arrived in the UK, I put it here as well, 19th November 2018 and then the expiry date on my current visa that's what is on my brp i put it there as well and they are saying that this is the most important part they are saying that the earliest ilr application date is 7th october 2023 and guys i'm over 13 days late because i was having my party i was just so distracted can you watch <laughs> So now let's apply. So now I'm due. Okay, I'm even late. So what you do is you go to you just type www.gov.uk ILR application and then you select let's say tier two visa blah 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 and then you, you go to apply and then they'll let you input your email address and then a password so that you can use that to go back to the application anytime you post so that you can always go back to continue. If you're looking to send money from the UK or other EU countries to Ghana, Nigeria or other African countries, I recommend TransferGo. So TransferGo, if you're wondering what they are, if you're a stranger on this channel. It's an international money transfer app that allows you to send money from the UK and other EU countries to over 34 different African countries. Did you hear me? To over 34 different African countries. Not loads of apps beat this. You can send money to Ghana, Nigeria and many, 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 many other African countries. So if you haven't tried it, I don't know what you're waiting for. With TransferGo, in at most 30 minutes, a person is going to get the money and your person gets the exact amount that you're sending. And as you send the money, you can actually track the transfer to see whether the person has gotten it where it is in the you know the whole transfer process it's very very easy hassle free very very convenient and what i love about them is their customer support if you should have a problem and then you contact them they are very prompt they are very quick to respond to your query and attend to you and sort everything out for you they are authorized by the uk financial conduct authority transfer go is currently being used by over 5 million users worldwide and when you check trustpilot.com they are rated the best money transfer app yes the best one transfer app on Transpilot.com. You can download Transfer Go for free whether I use an Android, I use an iOS, and I'll leave the link in the description. Okay. The amazing, amazing thing is that Transfer Go is giving unlimited £20 reward if you transfer or refer a friend. So when you use the app, you can actually generate your own referral code from the app or generate a referral link and then share it to your friends. And if these friends that you refer are able to send about £100, you know, in the first six months between two countries, you are gifted unlimited £20 reward. So you can imagine the more friends you invite, the more money you get you don't have to be registered as an influencer for them or blah 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 you get the money okay i love transfer go and i recommend transfer go to you if you're in the uk or any eu country and you're willing to transfer money to friends and family in ghana nigeria or other african countries okay they are rated the best transfer company on trustpilot.com and i'm privileged to be associated with this brand thank you so much transfer go for sponsoring today's video so i have already done that okay so let's go and sign in now i'm entering the password that i used okay so i'm signing in now okay so i filled the application but i'm just going to go over and then see okay so let's go to the start button okay so are you currently in the uk my answer was yes do you currently have an application with the home office for leaves remain for which you have not yet received a decision my answer was no i don't have any application then i gave my email address and then who does this email belong to it belongs to the applicant it says do you have an immigration advisor based in the uk no i don't have and then it says select a category in which you're applying for the indefinite leave to remain so mine is skilled worker tier two or international sports person select a category in which you're applying for indefinite leave to remain mine is skilled worker okay so continue and then we go to the application my title is miss because whenever i got married i never changed my name because i'll ha have to change everything so i just kept the miss and i'll result that in t can we use this email address to contact you yes provide your telephone number i gave my telephone number where do you use this telephone number for you we use whilst in the uk provide your postal address i gave my uk postal address is this where you live yes 
when did you start living at this address i mentioned this november 2022 what is your sex female what is your relationship status happily married or civil partner country of nationality ghana country of birth ghana place of birth accra date of birth october 3rd 93 do you have a valid passport yes your passport number i input my passport number there and after all this i made my husband go through just so that we are sure that i put the right details there okay so issue date of your passport expiry date of your passport confirm you can provide this passport yes i can provide this passport if required do you have a valid national id card i have a national id card but it's not valid because it's expired so no that is in ghana and then the next one was do you currently hold or ever held any other nationality or citizenship no how many days weeks months or years have you lived at this address 11 months what's the ownership i own it when did you first enter the uk 19th november 2018 and as i i checked do you have a visa leave to enter or remain or any other permission to be in the uk yes i have my brp yes what is the end date of your most recent visa so i checked the date on this which was 4th december 2024 have you ever spent any of your two three or five year continuous period with leave to enter or remain in the crown dependencies you know those isle of man isle of whatever whatever and no i haven't since you first entered the uk have you had any absences from the uk yes so now they're asking where i went so which countries did you did you visit or travel through when absent from the uk and crown dependencies so the first one was i went to ghana when did you leave the uk and i said 28th october 2020 anytime you're traveling out of the uk you need to keep all your, your boarding pass or whatever your e-ticket or your flight invoice or whatever keep it safe so that you'll be able to remember the exact days that you traveled and all that okay when did you return so i returned back second december 20th so they want to know whether you spent more than 180 days outside the uk in a 12 month period because that means you don't qualify okay and then they're saying what was the reason for the time you spent outside so i wrote i traveled to my home country ghana to get married that is have my wedding ceremony spend time with my family and also to enjoy my honeymoon after the wedding and then they are saying that which other countries have you visited okay so i also mentioned united states of america i mentioned the date 16 that was even just recently and then when did you return so i put it there again that was just two weeks and then they said what was the reason for this time spent i traveled to visit family in the united states and for tourism okay and then what they are now saying that what evidence will you provide to support the reason for all these absences from the uk so i wrote that one i'm going to submit my marriage certificate to indicate the reason for travel for the first one that i went to ghana and two i'm going to also um, submit scan pages of my passport indicating the dates of my travel from the uk and the return date and i'm also going to submit the united states of america visit visa and i'm also going to submit my e-ticket to the united states of america and then e-ticket for my travel to ghana this shows the correct departure date however the return date was changed from 30th november 2020 to 1st december 2020 proof attached okay so these are the things that i'm submitting i'm submitting five evidences to prove why i left the uk have you previously lived in a country outside the uk including your country but oh yes country you have lived in. i've lived in ghana the date you lived there from from my birth my birth date and the date you lived there too 19th november 2018 this is my country of birth where i lived and schooled until november 2018 when i relocated to the uk what's your current national insurance number so i i put it there have you passed the life in the uk test yes and then i input my reference number there to show that i have really passed the life in the uk test so have you ever been refused a visa for the uk deported from the uk removed from the uk required to leave the uk refused entry? no okay have you ever been refused a visa for any country other than the uk yes deported no but because the first one is yes i had to answer yes okay and now they are asking that give details of what happened so i wrote an application for a visa was refused country united states of america date october 2016 give more details of what happened and i wrote i was denied a visa because i was not able to demonstrate that i have ties that will compel me to return to my home country after my travel to the united states okay and then what's your sponsor license number your current employer the sponsor you put the sponsor license number there and then the occupation code for nurses i put it there my current rate of pay i put it there my weekly hours i put it there are you currently on maternity leave no convictions have i ever had any convictions criminal conviction penalty for a driving offense for example disqualification for speeding um, and arrests caution warning whatever whatever 
I have never had this. Glory be to God. But if you have a driving offense or whatever, put it there and explain what happened, okay? Um, in either peace or war times, have you ever been involved in a suspected war? No. Terrorist activity? No. Ter- terrorism? No. Do you have any home office reference numbers? No. Okay. So biometric residence details. Are you able to provide a biometric residence? Yes, and it is valid. Place of issue, United Kingdom. Enter your permit number. So this is my permit number. Let me just cross check again. Yes. And then the issue date. Yes. And then the expiry date. Yes. So continue. Okay. So the finance part, they're asking, do you or anyone else who is part of the application receive public funds? No, I've never received public funds. So go and then document. Okay. So these are the documents that they want me to bring. Okay. I'll provide a declaration signed by me to the home office. These are the documents that they're asking me to provide. So this is the form. I'm going to download it again. Yes, save. Okay. So they they have a form where I need to sign to declare my consent for the home office to do verification checks. Like contact my bank, contact this, contact that, contact that. So the home office will check that information and supporting documentation from a bank that you supply as part of this application is correct. You must download, sign and return the following declaration to confirm that you consent for the home office to request verification checks. So I will have I consent to that. So now these are the documents that they need. One, mandatory is my passport. Then two, other evidences from my reasons or absence from the UK. Then three, um, evidence of my immigration status, that's my BRP. Then four, declaration signed for them to do verification checks then my most recent pay slip and then the documentation from the sponsor who issued the certificate of sponsorship that led to your last permission to stay as the two migrant confirming that i am still required so you need an employment letter or a letter from your employer stating that you are still required for the job stating that um, stating your current shortage occupation could stating your current rate of pay stating the confirmation that you are um the pay is an appropriate level for you know your job and then they should also state whether you're on maternity leave or not and then current biometric residence permits for myself and all previous passports that i have used to travel to or remain in the uk so let me chip this in real quick okay with the document checklist that you get from the gov.uk after filling your form you realize that there is a brp and then there is document to prove your immigration status so usually you think that they are the same so apparently they are not okay so there's a way to prove your immigration status and i'm going to demonstrate that real quick so this is a different day altogether i'm just about to go for my biometric appointment and then i realized that it's actually two different documents that you need to submit so you have to submit the brp card and then you also have to submit a document to prove your immigration status so it's just going online and you type gov.uk proof immigration status okay there's something called a share code you can either get it to prove to an employer your permission to work in the uk or to prove to a landlord that you have the permission to rent in the uk and then there's a general one that's proof your immigration status so apparently a lady phoned the home office and then they said any of these documents is accepted for me i use the one where you're proving to your employer and when we give you a share code okay the reason why i did not do the one that has the proving your immigration status is that you need to have a uk vi account and then you should have used the uk vi account um, before to be able to assess that one okay but because i have a very short time to submit i decided to just get the proving your rights to work okay and then apparently that works as well okay so let me quickly show you how to get that one so so i'm gonna type gov.uk prove immigration status okay so view and prove your immigration status get a share code so the share code is what proves it okay who can use this service you can only use this service if you have a uk vi account you have a uk business immigration account if you have ever applied for the eu settlement scheme or if you've ever used the uk immigration id check app to prove your identity when applying for a visa or if you've created an account when you were applying for a visa you will have received a uk vi account confirmation email so i have not done any of these things recently i don't have a uk vi account so they said if you do not have a uk vi account there are also different ways that you can prove your right to work to an employer and then you can also prove your rights to rent to a landlord so i'm just going to choose prove your right to work okay to an employer because like i said the lady who phoned the home office they said any of those documents would also be accepted okay so um if you're an irish or british this is what you should do and if you are not 
a British or Irish citizen. Okay, so I can apply for a share code online. Okay, so this is how I'm going to do it. So I'm going to start now. So they'll need your um, a few details. So let's say I have a biometric residence card or residence permit and then continue. And so they'll ask you to um, put the, the code that is on your BRP, the top right corner of your BRP. You have to put that code there. So I'm going to put that code there now. Okay, so now let me put that code there. So after I input the code, then you put in your date of birth. So I'm going to put in my date of birth, 3rd of October, 1993. So after you put in your date of birth, now this comes, your right to work, Nanel Grizzle Dainty, blah, 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 blah. So now um, continue because they said you cannot give this page an employer. It is not proof of your right to work. So continue. So now this is the share code, okay? I'm going to cover the code so that you don't see it, okay? So this is what proves, this is what you can give to your employer to prove your right to work in the UK. So this is what I am going to print out and then add to my document to submit for um, my ILR application. So for those who are wondering, this is what this part means, okay? So by sending the application, confirm to the best of your knowledge that the information related to the applicant application is correct and then the top supporting evidence is also correct so i am the applicant so i accept as above then now you choose the service so currently there's been increment so if you want the standard service we can take up to six months or more you're going to pay 2885 pounds and if you choose the priority service we can take about five working days you're going to pay 3385 pounds and super priority which can take um the next working day to get a response that is three thousand eight hundred and eighty five pounds so obviously i can't wait for six months um i might even want to travel you know um, and i'll need my passport and you can't travel whilst you're waiting for a decision to be made and then priority service is also five working days and it's three three and the super priority which is just the next working day after your biometrics is three thousand eight so i'm going to choose the priority service which is just five working days okay after biometrics so payment, they said before you continue, you should only move to the next page if you have checked your answers and you're ready to submit your application. Once you select continue to world pay, you will not be able to retain and edit your application. So continue to world pay. So I'm going to pay with PayPal. So all my bank cards are linked to PayPal and PayPal is like very legit. Yeah, so payment successful. Let me just quickly take a picture of that. So I'm going to print the confirmation. Let me just download it. So guys, basically it's very simple. So people who have, you know, left the UK a couple of times, those are the people that would spend more time explaining why they left, when they came back and all the dates and all that. But other than that, for somebody, for instance, who has been here all the five years, I mean, just your name and certain details about yourself. You can actually use like 15 minutes to finish this whole application. So I'm just going to leave the documents that they are asking again on the screen so that you're aware. Okay. Continue. So I'm going to download the consent form again. I have to attend. I'm also going to book an appointment. So my unique application number is this one. Okay. I'm also going to download um, the checklist. So I'm also going to download a copy of my application form. So all the things that I stated, I want to see them. Okay. So I have downloaded everything here. I've downloaded a copy of my application form. I've downloaded a copy of the supporting documents checklist. I have saved a unique application number and then I have downloaded third party verification consent form. So let me just check my downloads to see that all three documents are here. So this is the application form. Everything that I went through, I have successfully downloaded it. And also this is the checklist of the documents that I need to submit. I have successfully downloaded it and also this is the consent form that I have to sign and submit along with my application and submit okay so I have successfully downloaded all three documents and then now I'm going to book my appointment so they sent me an access code and they want me to input the access code here so I can either book my appointment or upload my documents as well I'll just book an appointment. So these are the various ones. They have ex exclusive, standard, whatever. I'll just choose the first one. And then this is the one that's in Belfast. This one is in Glasgow. This one is in London. So obviously I'm going to choose the Belfast, just two miles away. So the only available date is Tuesday, October 24th. So it costs about £268 in all. So I'll come back with feedback. Fingers crossed that... Um, it was successful yeah 
hopefully so that's all you need so let's wait and see so if you're planning on applying for your ilr soon this is it thank you so much for watching bye